Hello and welcome to my world of crochet. My name is Dina and uh, today I'm here with you for a Sort My Stash 2024 and this is part three for sorting my stash and we are going to look into some of all of my Stanley yarns. Um, as you saw in the introduction part to Sorting My Stash 2024, um, I had a range of Stanley boxes still from uh, old Stanley orders where I am stashing my yarns in. The thing is with those, they just tend to get mixed and how it's all packed at that current time. But that doesn't help me with the actual overview of the yarns that I do have. Therefore, I've repacked these boxes so that I have all of the same yarn types in the same box. So in this case today, we're going to go through my Stanley Muffin Cakes, but we're also going to look into the Souffle and Souffle Lux because they all were able to fit into the same crate. While I might have wanted to do the baby muffins together with the muffins because the yarn content are the exact same. The difference is only the size of the two cakes. Unfortunately, I did not have enough room to have all my baby muffins in the box. And therefore, that's why I chose to split it up. Um, but before we get there, we cannot really talk yarn, as you know, without me having my faithful mug of tea today. And today here, my tea is the lovely uh, Dajeling tea. Um, it is a loose tea plant that I got a while back when I were in Germany. Um, and it is from the mountains of the Himalayas. And it is just this, um, it's a fine black tea with a quite sweet flavor, but without being sugar sweet, but it is like um, a, a sweeter tea. Um, and yeah, I really have found myself to enjoy this loose tea blend. So I will definitely get myself um, a new once I'm eventually back in Germany. I do occasionally go to Germany for shopping, not very often. Um, but it does happen from time to time. And then in that case, I need to remember myself to bring home some tea. So I thought um, I'm going to let you into a quick overview of how the box is looking right now. Um, before we're going to go through all the yarns that I have in the box. We're going to go through yarn specs, etc. as well. Um, also, what I want to let know is that the majority of these Stanley yarns, I still have them in their cellophane packing. Cellophane is this plastic-like packing that they have around them uh, with a nice little tie, bow tie on top. This helps keeping uh, the yarn safe for any possible things that shouldn't be into the yarns. But also, with a bit of luck, keeps any um, sort of smell that could be in the house away. Uh, I've been told that uh, yarns from my house doesn't generally smell quite nice, so that's nice to, to hear. Um, but just to make sure that it's not too affected should something happen to the yarns, then they're a little bit extra protected by this um, cellophane, and uh, that will take a bit of a while to uncrankle all that. So I do apologize and advise for any uh, crinkling, crankling sounds. Uh, but I think that you will definitely see the yarns much better if I take them out of them. So um, let's just give you this a sneak peek preview of how the box is currently looking. Um, all packed up and nicely, so I have a good overview of these individual yarns. This is the box of yarn, and it is one of these Stanley boxes. And uh, this gives you a nice little overview. As you can see, I did have to stack a little on top. But we do have various yarns, and we are gonna go through all of these yarns together. So, that was a quick preview of how it's all stacked. Maybe I can also remember myself. Um, but um, what we are gonna do is, I think we'll start with the yarns that's on top of the box, which is the Stanley Souffle Locks, and I have two of those. Um, I got them over two different orders that I do remember um, and I'm going to take them out of this uh, crinkling uh, cellophane for you to easier see um, and again I need to keep track of, of which goes where because the small bags that they are in they also have different sizes um, but the first 
souffle locks from Stanley we have here. And I think it's extremely gorgeous. We have this dark green to a lime green to, I would say it's a sandy, natural sandy color, beige maybe, brownish. Um, and I'm sure this becomes like a really gorgeous shawl. So the souffle locks, it's a colorway 1991 and it's the dialogue one. Um, and it is definitely a fine weight yarn. It is plied together. And we do have a center pull here at the very bottom. And as you can see, they are all plied together, if I can get it to show nicely. So it is plied together even with the Lurex thread. Um, and, 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 and let's see, if I'll do like this, you can enjoy it while I read some specs. It's, um, I'm actually going to turn this bit around. So the content of this cake is that it's a 310 grams. So um, 100 grams is three and a half ounces. So it's a bit more than three times three and a half ounces. That makes it 10 and a half, maybe close to 11 ounces, somewhere in between 10 and a half and 11 ounces. For those, you get 900 meters of yarn. 900 meters is about 980-ish yards. Um, the content of the souffle locks is 80% cotton, 10% polyester, and then we have 10% lurex. The 10% lurex is the shine you get. But what you also see, if you look up a little bit closer on this, is that it has this sort of lighter thread going through and that is likely the polyester that goes in so the green is the cotton the the sort of shaded through and it's difficult to see in camera um that is likely um the polyester oh you can see it a bit here um for the ocean specs you get recommended a one to a three millimeter crochet hook a one it would probably be quite tight um three would definitely work maybe two and a half three so it is for a lighter crochet project for sure um three to three and a half millimeters knitting needles are recommended you can wash this yarn at 30 degrees celsius um that could be washed in the machine should you desire so you can iron it at low do not tumble dry and do not bleach you can dry clean it and lay flat to dry um they make some really, really gorgeous shawls um, and I haven't really decided what shawl yet I'm making, but I'm definitely going to make some sort of gorgeous shawl from it. At least that's like, you know, um, the the initial thought. Um, and I have a second of them as well. So the yarn specs for this next cake is the exact identical because obviously um, we are talking about two of the same yarns here. I'm just going to unwrap it for you. I'm trying to avoid the crinkling a bit, but it is almost impossible. This color-wise is sort of similar in some aspect because it is lime green to a yellow. And it does look like it has an extra, but I think it's just as the yellow goes into this cream white. Um, this is how this one is looking. I think it's gorgeous as well. I, I really enjoy how this is looking also. Um, definitely also an option for a very gorgeous shawl for sure. So the yarn specs here are the same. The only difference is the colorway. And here the colorway is 3682 uh, and it's a dial up two. So colorway 3682 dial up two. That's it i would say um so that is my two souffle locks the souffle locks right now if you are going to buy them from uh stanley yarns which is where i get them um about 11 euro 75 so i don't know in us dollars it's probably like 12 12 and a half dollars roughly depending on the exchange rate um then i want to go through the regular souffles i have and here I have multiple of the same, or I do have a few which is, are the same. Um, I have two that's the same. Um, so therefore I only take out one of them. Um, also, I'd rather not take them out too many of these because apparently the newest I have, the label is loose inside the bag here uh, and to prevent getting that one lost. Um, this one is the colorway 
22 for so 2000 uh, not 2000 224 uh, and dialot two um again i am going to take this one out the one of them because i have two two of the exact same um if you saw my stinley haul um and the start of march um that would be the yarns that i picked up then uh, i just haven't had the time to use them yet um and as you can see, these are loose ends, so that's why I'm trying not to take them out for, for all of them. Because it's just simply um, a little bit too impractical, obviously. Um, but, but this is how it looks up real. And here you can easily see uh, what I mean with this sort of light thread going through. Um, the souffle here, yarn spec wise, um, they are a bit lighter because they don't have the Lurex thread. So they are only 280 grams. 280 grams is, well, it's less than 11 and a half ounces. It's probably closer to 11 ounces. Um, oh no, 10 and a, 10 and a half, 11. Um, cl probably closer to 10 ounces, that's what I wanted to say. Um, you get 900 meters of yarn. So that's lengthwise the same as the Lux. It's just not having the lyrics. Um, so that means that it's about 980-ish yards. Um, it is 85% cotton and 15% polyester. Um, so, so spec wise, actually it has, um, a higher cotton percentage, but it also have a higher percentage of polyester. Um, so basically the 10% lurex gets split five, five into if it's cotton or polyester. It's, it feels quite soft, um, for its, uh, for its yarn and here you can also see it is indeed a quite thin yarn um, further than that the yarn specs are the same for this one so they also recommend a one to a three millimeter crochet hook or a three to three and a half millimeter knitting needles we are having this um, navy greenish on the uh, navy blue on the outside to a lighter green to a white on the inside and this is a solid white um, and yeah there's further than that not extremely much more to say about this Lay flat to dry, can't be dry, cleaned, do not bleach, do not tumble dry, iron at a low, um, can be washed at 35, uh, 30 degrees uh, Celsius, that about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and that's going to be the same for all the souffles that I'm showing you here, because again, as I said, it does kind of make sense to keep them a little bit um, collected. Um, and I am also, because I do have two more of the same, I'm just going to take out one of them. Here we have the two more. So one of them I will let nicely stay in this package. Um, also helps me keep track if I do some small, small loose labels. And then I think um, I have some other older ones where actually they are different labeled. Um, it's a colorway at... Uh, 207 dialot one yarn specs are the same as i said it is a loosely put up it's green on the outside then it's a lovely lovely red to an orange i actually like this it's it's a nice uh it's a nice fresh color at least i think so um and further that the yarn specs are the same the interesting part is when you're looking at this here in the red you see the polyester where in the green you barely see it at all but it is there so it's it's just a bit funny with if you look how it goes around with it um then i have this one which is i'm going to take that one out as well and actually this one is currently in my um 1000 subscriber giveaway as a part of it so i had two of them where i took one of them and i added it to the giveaway so if you haven't entered that giveaway yet check here up top um of course to enter that giveaway i do request for you to be subscribed to my channel that is a requirement if you haven't done that yet and you do enjoy talking about jan hit it down below and also hit that little bell so you get notified when i do post new videos so um, the yarn that is in my giveaway as well as I still have here is this absolutely a gorgeous a green to a pink to a more like fuchsia pink or fuchsia fuchsia. I think it's different how you say it across the world. 
um, but I do think this one is absolutely gorgeous. And that was the cutaway 352 and die lot two. That is what we can see down here. And then the interesting part is those last three souffles I've shown you um, are the most recent that I got. Whereas I have two more which are from older orders, um, like from last year orders. And they have the label all the way around them like they all the Stanley case normally do. So I'm not sure why or what happened since they changed um, the way of labeling, but um, that's okay. We'll still go through the yarns happily. Um, this is a colorway 362, dye lot 2, again, souffle. We have a purple to a pink to a white. This one is gorgeous too, and I actually now wonder if this pig is similar to the pig that I have here. I think they might actually be the same. So theoretically, should you want to, you could do some, some cutting and adding to change the project um, if you wanted to. But that's generally, you know, that would be something that you would really want to do because that is a lot of cutting um, or, or to get everything sorted. Um, I did say the yeah, I did say it was colorway 362, die lock 2. The last one I have of the souffle locks in my stash is this gorgeous one. And I do believe that's the first souffle locks that I ever bought, which is the colorway 204. And it's dye lot four. It is a very lovely uh, blue to a lighter blue to a white. And this blue, I do believe, is the same as this blue. So I could also easily to be like, you know, I could make some sort of color, bigger color transitioning project without even having to cut the arms here. Um, absolutely gorgeous, I think. So um, what's the plan for these two flays? Um, I'm definitely just probably going to make shorts of them. Um, those I have double, I might consider selling or giving away. Um, that is, is not 100% decided currently. Um, it's, there is a possibility that I will take photos and see if I can sell them. Um, um, and then, and then just lay it like that. Or where I keep them for a bigger project, um, maybe if I can get a decent price for them, I might consider selling them just to, to help sorting my stash a bit. Um, and then we only have, actually I lied in the beginning when I was saying what we're going to go through, because we actually also have one that's a muffin tweed. And it's, according to my opinion, probably one of the prettiest of their muffin tweeds. Hmm. So let's start by looking at Muffin Tweet because it is a little bit unique for itself. Um, it doesn't have a big label wrapped around it like the rest does. But I am just gonna take this one out of the parcel or out of the cellophane. And I'm trying to keep track of it all. But I think this is so fucking good. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, I should not swear, but I think this is so gorgeous. I am a sucker for red, and I'm a sucker for green, I'm a sucker for blue, um, and purple, and I, I like colors in general, but this is gorgeous. I think this is the most gorgeous of the tweets. Um, I love the red gradient from this darker Bordeaux red to this brighter, I would say, uh, mailbox red if you know the danish mailboxes their color um or danish flag maybe um i love how it shades as you see it has a center pull and it also has the label here uh woven through some of the thread and here therefore we can easily see it's applied yarn but it's not plied together so it's loose threads that you hold together to apply the yarn while you work with it and what I can see is, I do believe it is, I'm trying to find out, it's a three-stranded one, I think. I would say it's three. 
one of them seems thicker. It could be four. I think it might actually be four stranded. Yeah, it's four stranded. Ta -ta. Four strands. It's um, it's a very nice dense. So this is the muffin tweed, um, and the muffin tweed is a five hundred and fifty grams. 550 grams is a lot of yarn. <laughs> um, basically, it's like, oh my goodness, um, 19, 20-ish ounces. It's pretty big. This is a very pretty big one. Uh, and for those, you get 1160 meters of yarn. 1160 meters of yarn is like 1300 yards. Um, and it contains 10% merino wool, 75% uh, acrylic and 15% silk. It's a colorway 10 and it's a dye lot 1. And yeah, I remember this was one of the first times I saw this color in the store. And I just had to get it. That's why I bought it back then. Um, and I still have it. I have not decided what I'm going to make from this. Um, but some sort of wrap or throw um, a shawl, I think... Um, because I probably would need to to make a, a good enough sized a poncho of it. Um, you could theoretically make a sweater, but again, then I think I would need two of them, um, which is actually also sort of tempting. Um, it does not have washing instructions on this at all, um, or any other instructions, um, but I would assume that we are probably again uh, wash at 30 degrees uh, Celsius, so 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I also assume we are um, can be dry cleaned, uh, do not bleach, do not tumble dry, especially because there's wool in this one. Um, lay flat to dry. Um, I think it requires a bit thicker hook compared to um, compared to the souffles. Um, we are probably looking towards somewhere between. Let's see. Well, we might go towards a, a three and a half, four millimeter crochet hook with this one. So it's closer to a DK weight. Not completely. It's a thicker two. Yeah, maybe it's a th three. Maybe this is a three weight. It is It is definitely um, the, one of the thicker cakes from, um, from Stanley of the cakes that I do have. And I think it is a gorgeous. So next we are going to dive into all of my uh, Stanley muffin cakes and i do have both muffin and muffin fresh um some of them are limited edition cakes um generally uh the rule of thumb here is that the price wise they are somewhere between uh 10 and 12 a euro less dollars depending on exchange rates um and i think for the amount of yarn you get they are insanely good deals but yeah let's dive into them so I'm not really sure where to start, but it doesn't, I guess, really matters a lot. Just need to get started. Um, and um, some of these I just got because I thought they were so pretty. Um, and that's something I still think today. And they have like a lot, like really a lot of yarn on them. Um, this is just so gorgeous. Purple, faxia, peachy orange to a more like um, minute orange, light orange to an almost like cream white. I'm not really sure if it's still like slightly purple what it is. Because when I look at it, I wouldn't say it's exactly white and yet I would. Because when you look at it here on the side, it looks white. You can see here now it's a three stranded yarn. Isn't this gorgeous? Like, and it's feeling quite soft as well. Mm -hmm. So this is one of their Muffin Fresh. And it's colorway 1071, Dye Lot 1. So it's one of the first they also made of these. Um, and since all of the muffins are the same, they might have different names being Muffin Fresh or Muffin Lemon Edition or just Muffin. Um, yarn spec wise, they are all of the same. And as I said, this is a three ply yarn. Um, and the three ply you hold together to create your yarn. I would estimate this one for uh, somewhere between three and a four millimeter crochet hook. They recommend a two to four millimeters um, on the yarn ball or three and a half to four and a half millimeter knitting needles. 
Uh, iron at low uh, can be washed at 30 degrees Celsius, so that's 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Lay flat to dry, can be dry, clean, do not tumble dry, do not bleach. No surprise. Yarn specs are, it's 100% acrylic yarn. So that's very simple. And for those 100% uh, acrylic, you have a 430 grams. So 430 grams is like a lot of yarn. Um, three and a half, seven, 14, probably close to 15 ounces. Um, and for those 15 ounces, you get 2000 meters of yarn. 2000 meters of yarn is a lot. That's almost 2200. So it's like 2180 or so yards. Isn't that amazing? Oh, and it has center pull, and in the end of the center pull tab, you have these small like notions of the muffins. And this is a heart. I'm not sure if they are all having hearts. Sometimes they have clovers and others. If that's depending on uh, the yarn, like the cake type, I'm unsure. But they're really nice, and that helps you keep track. Uh, the center pull goes from the bottom, but but regardless. So what are the plans? Really, I think I thought probably about baby blankets or um, shawls or ponchos or something big. So the thing is, the benefit here is, of course, if you do make a shawl, you can make a shawl that really eats up a lot of yarn or if, it, if it's a stitch with that eats up a lot of yarn without you having to really worry because you have plenty of yarns to go from. So that's nice. Um, yeah, that's what we do. And then I have, this is also a muffin fresh. So yarn spec wise, they are exactly the same as the one we just looked at, uh, which is translated to very, very freaking gorgeous. Um, here though, we do have a little bit more to keep track of because it looks like it lost its bead and I don't feel it. So I don't know what happened, but here you can easily see how the three, th strands are being loose and that is the outer edge because of the red here and the inner edge is uh, where we start and this is like a rainbow one purple blue green yellow red but this end looks better it's a colorway 1020 dye lot three um, I haven't seen it for a bit. They are, I'm not sure if they still have it or if it's sold out. When I'm looking at the purples, I'm realizing these two purples, I think they're identical. So you could theoretically combine them, even though that would not be what I would do. Um, I think they're gorgeous each on their own. Um, if anything, it would be gorgeous to take this one and, and make maybe a blanket of it uh, for a baby or even... Um, Bake a bigger blanket and then get more of them so you can really get like a big rainbow one. Let's celebrate the pride and the rainbows and the university of colors we have. Everybody can. There's so many options, right? So um, I have a few more. This was also one of the very first cakes that I bought from Stanley, I remember. And um, it took me also with all the... I don't understand actually why I haven't started using any of these yet. I think it's because I have so many other projects that I've really wanted to make. And therefore I've focused on making those projects um, first. And I simply just have a limited amount of time because um, I work. Um, next to doing this, I work 40 hours a week when I'm not doing overtime, which does happen more regularly these days, apparently. But um, that's detail. Um, this is a lovely blue one. I'm not sure. This is a, I would say this looking at it, I would say this is a dark, dark blue, navy blue, to a brighter blue, to a brighter blue, to an even brighter blue, to an even brighter blue. And you have here again the heart center pull. And the center pull then starts at the bottom. Um again, it is also a muffin fresh. Uh, so yarn specs are the same. This is the colorway 1441 Dialot 3. I think this one is also super gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and then it makes me wonder if this blue is the same as this blue which i would say it might actually be yeah again more options again i'm not the type that's really gonna like if i were making a specific project i would probably sit down and really start cutting yarns but um that's not what i want to do right now what's interesting is is the 
different size of how they wind up their skeins because these are the same. But look at the height difference. This is higher where this is tinier and a bit fatter. Um, of course, that's just a coincidence. It's just fun that I notice that there is this difference. We have one more, and that is not a muffin fresh. This is just a regular muffin. Let's see if I can get it out. Um, I do really like these colors. And it's a nice soft acrylic as well, um, the muffins. So yarn spec wise, it's the same as a muffin fresh. There is really no difference there. It is just um, how they are branding them. We are having this more like a, a, a petrol blue, almost almost sort of like teal. And it goes just into this lighter version of the same color until it's like a cream white. Um, I think this neutral way of fading colors is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it feels amazing as well. It's a colorway 44 and it's a dialot 3. And because of the scorchous blend of colors, that's why I got the yarn. I, I had no projects in mind when I got it. Um, I just got it because I thought it looked absolutely gorgeous. It's like that simple. Um, then I have another muffin, um, a regular muffin. Um, and that's why I'm unsure if the limited editions, because I do think I had a colorway from the limited edition series they had. Um, but I'm not sure if they actually brand the limited edition on the muffin cake, so it's just a regular muffin label. Again, it doesn't really matter because um, they are all basically just gorgeous yarns. Um, it's a colorway 94 Dialot 1. And I have a feeling that this was once a limited edition, but it could be that I've forgotten. So it's a dark green, so like a really dark forest green. And then it goes to lighter greens. Um, by the looks, we have just three different colors that shades here, but that's all right. Um, I, th I, I love green. As I said, I told you earlier, I am a sucker for green. And this is a very gorgeous green. I really, really look forward to work with this one. I like it. I really like it. Um, so yeah, yarn specs, same as the rest. It's a gorgeous green. Now I have um, three cakes left and they are orange. And these orange cakes I bought last year for King's Day because King's Day, um, yeah, uh, what I'm going to do this year for King's Day, I haven't really decided, but that's what it's going to be. Um, King's Day is a Saturday. Um, but what I want to say is that these yarns I bought for King's Day. And um, I just bought a whole box of orange yarns. Various different orange yarns. Um, and that's how they ended up here. I had no plans. I just wanted to do an orange unboxing with you guys. Because it seemed so fitting. I say it was maybe on the day that was normally doing... Um, I don't know if it, was, it felt on the day I was normally doing giveaways or if it felt on my normal yarn all day or whatever. But I decided it was a great idea to celebrate by giving myself a box of orange yarns. Um, and for those, I had three of the yarns. Actually, I had more, but I had plenty of uh, of big um, of these big muffins um, and of obviously orange. So we have this one, which is a burnt orange, and we have a more like a peachy orange to a white. Um, this one is the colorway 12 Dialot 5. And I still think it's a nice one on its own. Um, and I have a two more. And I've been debating. Well, I've not been debating actually. I have decided what I'm gonna make from some of these. Um, and that will require a little bit of cutting. I thought I could get around not doing so, but um, after looking deeper into it, um, I'm afraid it still will have to require a little bit of cutting from my side. And um, that's just how it's going to be. Um, but I will tell you about that in a few. This is the colorway 91 Dial Up 1. More like burnt orange in the center, so lighter. And then it, it's not white, it's like just this very bright orange on the outside. Again, very soft yarn. It feels really nice. Lots of yards on it. 
And the last one is also another absolutely gorgeous orange. And I'm wondering if I'll end up using all of these together for the same project or not. Um, we will have to see. Um, but I will explain just in a few. Um, it's a colorway 90 Dialot 1. This is the most gorgeous, I think, of the orange ones. I like how it goes from this very nice orange to this more like uh, neon, neon brighter light baby orange to white. Gorgeous. And it feels so nice as yarn. It really does. So um, originally I thought I'm going to, um, I thought actually I had the idea that these two were uh, like, if I would start from the center and I would end here, then I could start on the center here and continue. But I realized after looking at them that the center is darker. Um, but the thought was actually to make the heart collector shawl of this, um, because I think the heart collector shawl is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I've seen heart collector shawls being made by Amanda from Scraptastic Crochet, uh, but also Dawn Yandel has made the heart collector shawl. Um, I will uh, link to these lovely ladies description box down below. But I will also link to the pattern, which I do believe can be bought on Ravelry. Um, I have the pattern. I just need to decide to make it. Um, so I want to make the center heart a different color than the rest. Um, that could easily be um, this more like burnt orange um, and then have the rest. Or instead of the burnt orange, I need to source a nice red. Uh, of the same yarn. And I do believe I might have one in my muffins. The question is just if that's enough um, uh, for crocheting the center heart, uh, because I would hate to take out this red, but I could theoretically um, grab the red, I guess, um, just to make it a little bit different than the rest. Um, but I can see now when I'm sitting with these yarns that I will have to do a little bit of cutting um, for the heart collectors because um, the colorways doesn't 100% add up as how I thought they would. Um, yet I am sure um, it will be absolutely fine once I get there. Um, so that is a future project uh, for some of these yarns. Uh, for all of the muffins, I intend to keep them and do something with them, at least right now, right here, right now. Um, and yeah, um, the Heart Collectors is a future project of mine, which is also going to be a very long project, I think. Um, what I do seem to see is that once you get to the fringes, it could be an awesome next couch project. So maybe I need to start looking into if I can actually get um, this um, red, if I can source it somewhere to, to make the center heart, because I think that could be nicer than uh, the current alternative. Um, unless I wanna cut into all of these, I could do that. Um, because I have more than enough yarns. So theoretically, if you want to make the biggest heart collectors, you just need two skeins of these. Um, and I have definitely more than that. So I do have enough yarn to somehow make it uh, stretch and last. I just have to think about how I can do it best possible um, and, and, and what would look nicest. Um, do comment down below if you think that I should see if I can source the reds before I start on this project to, to make a real red, lovely, uh, gorgeous red center, um, rather than um, the burnt orange center. I think a red center might be nicer because, you know, the center is the heart itself and then it fringes around. Um, so it seems more logic to actually have a lovely center heart. That's red. Um, that's my quick thoughts. Um, comment down below what you think. I would love your advice. Um, as to how you think the heart collectors um, could be made um, with these orange yarns. Um, absolutely keen to hear it. Um, I haven't read through the pattern yet. I have the pattern. Um, it looks gorgeous and it's, you know, it's all these things, you know, um, I find something, I think it's gorgeous. I don't think about how I'm making it. I'm just getting it and then I'll figure it out as I go. Hey, that's me. Um, that's pretty much wrapping it up because right now the box here next to me it's empty and as I said, I have them on these Stanley boxes where I stash them. I will pack them back into the cellophane so that 
I can stash them up very nicely um, again so that they are protected. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, therefore, I'm going to wish you a happy crafting. And if you haven't done it yet, I did mention it earlier, do hit that subscribe button. It would be really nice. And um, if you want to watch more yarn content, there should be some videos right up here. Take care and happy crafting. Bye.